I would argue uh, from a soft stance um, that part of what defines mental health is our ability to regularly engage in the sorts of physical practices that help us be better mentally and physically, emotionally, you will, spiritually, et cetera. But what do I mean by that? Well, so for instance, we all know, and it's just kind of basic knowledge now that um, sleeping deeply and long enough, often enough, is really essential to maintain a healthy emotionality. There's no surprise there. And I've blabbed endlessly on the internet and on podcasts and every, you know, I mean, I, I'll probably be put going into the grave saying that people should be getting morning sunlight, not through sunglasses. Yes, eyeglasses <laughs> and contacts. Or I'll be like, those would be my dying words, right? Um, uh, perhaps. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, if you're not sleeping well 85% of the time, um, you're not going to be at your best mentally and physically. Some people are more resilient to that sleep loss. Other people aren't. Um, we could add to that um, other foundational practices or, um, you know, getting regular movement, right? I, exercise or some other form of movement. Maybe it's uh, running, maybe it's swimming, maybe it's cycling, maybe it's weight training. doesn't really matter. Yoga, something else, you know, physical skill training. Um, and then social connection, of course, quality nutrition, which if you really want to make yourself miserable, go on the internet and sit and make a claim about nutrition. Cause there's going to be somebody that's going to tell you that you're wrong. But the point is that I think everyone broadly agrees that, you know, getting ample nutrition, right. Not depleting yourself too much, nor overfeeding yourself too much, avoiding highly processed foods for the most part. And you know, these kinds of things lend people to kind of a, a, what we could call healthy nutrition, social connection. And then, um, you know, at some level having a, positive relationship. And I'll explain what I mean by that with some sort of pursuit, either school or work or, um, and there I broadly describe work as, you know, we've got people who, um, whose work is to maintain home and, and take care of kids. And, and um, I can say that that's a, that's a ton of work and, and that's work too. So don't want to make it just constrained to career. So what, what do we, so we can lay down the kind of basics and then that leads us to a place where we all say, okay, yeah, we've heard all that before eat well, sleep well, have good relationships, avoid toxic people, exercise, et cetera. But I think we can actually take a step back from that and say, well, why are those things so useful? Well, the, the analogy I like to use is they is sort of like a buoy. They, they give us some buoyancy, right? They give us the ability to weather, you know, if you have a hard conversation with somebody, if you're well rested, you're going you're gonna to weather that better. You're going to interpret it better. You're going to be less reactive in ways you don't want to be more reactive in the ways perhaps that you want to be, et cetera. Um, anytime somebody is sick or hungry or something, they're not going to handle things as well. So there's just kind of all these obvious statements we can make. And, and the, the phrase positive buoyancy um, comes to mind. And Pat and I, you know, talked about that together. And that's sort of an ability to recover from and return to engagement in these practices really easily. You know, when we find ourselves in a place of not getting regularly regular sleep or regular exercise, nutrition, et cetera. What happens is we, there's this diabolical nature to that where we not only feel worse mentally, but we find it less, we find, excuse me, ourselves less capable of leaning into those things, right? When you're stressed, it's harder to sleep, which makes it harder to, to, to regulate stress, which makes it harder to sleep. It's a vicious cycle. And so I, I think for all of us, we can take a sort of a temperature of our mental health by saying, by simply looking at these practices and saying, you know, what percentage of nights am I getting enough quality sleep? Is it 50% of nights? Is it 75? Is it 80? I would say if it's an upwards of 80 or 85%, you're doing pretty well there. Right. And I would say that if you're eating well and exercising also about 80% of the time, 80% of days or meals, whatever, great. And if, you know, 80 to 85% of your social interactions are quality ones, great. So, you know, that's all fine and good. And I think that can be kind of a, a meter of your mental health because those things position you to deal with the challenges of life in this kind of positive buoyancy manner. 